You all are the blessedness of the Father. To God be the glory. How amazing you truly are. I trust the Lord that you all are doing amazingly well. Oh, wow. I thank God for you. Thank you for each and every one of you that are, you know, kind of watching. And I thank you for those who are subscribing at this point in time. Thank you very much for your blessings. Thank you so much for your manifestation. Thank you so much for all that you continue to do in creation. I am honored. I am blessed. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Amen and amen. So I'm just going to get right into it today. And I believe uh, the Father, the Bible says, he whom the Son uh, sets free is what is free indeed and i believe ever so strongly that the father just really wants to release somebody uh today from this dimension of uh, uh stagnancy yeah uh, this truly is yes you know can i basically help us to understand that there are many reasons why uh people can be stagnant uh in life yeah there are many reasons first of all i want to share the first reason one of them could be something that you have done, like we've always shared, yes, which is basically in the dimension of understanding the consequences of the things that you went through. For some of you, it's not what you've done. No, not at all. It could be something you inherited from family, parents, brothers, or whatever it is, the bloodline, they call it. Because the Bible says in Ezekiel and chapter 18, it says the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are what? They are set on edge. So which helps us to understand, it says the fathers have. So the reason why sometimes a lot of people are stagnant is not because of you, it's because the fathers have. So someone down your family. So this is why I always encourage a lot of people to consistently look within you know ask the lord questions because the bible says they have not and they because they have not because they ask not and when they ask they are ask with what the wrong motives so when you ask with the right motives you begin to understand that the lord is wanting to what to set you free from that stagnation amen and not only that, we looked at the first dimension, the consequences of what you did, the second dimension because of what your fathers did, and the third dimension is because of what? Your environment. Yes, environment. And for that reason, we've been looking at the dimension of Daniel and chapter what? And chapter 10. The Bible says that while Daniel was praying, the prince of Persia, can you see? So it could be the territorial spirit, yes, that is not allowing you to be able to thrive in what God has called you to thrive in. So it is for that reason, I want to look at the dimension of what we, <laughs> we have been through. So sometimes the consequences of what we did, either family or the environment. And I want us to look at this scripture from the book of 2 Chronicles and chapter 14. And I want us to look at the story of Asa, uh, uh, Asa, uh, whom we know, you know, is rooted in David and he became king eventually. You know, Asa was an amazing man in the Bible. Yeah, he truly was. He was an amazing man, but he didn't end well. <laughs> Do you see that? Though he started very well, he didn't end very well. No, not at all. So this is where you begin to understand majority of us, how we need to continue to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other, all other things shall be added unto you. Christ should be our focus because he is who we have become. And in Christ, can you see, we either sit as the Father and move as Holy Ghost. But then as we keep our eyes fixed on him, he's able to help us to navigate through the dimensions of what we need to walk through. Amen. To God be the glory. So I want us to look at Second Chronicles and chapter 14 and let's have a view of Asa's life. Yeah. Let's just have a look at what, you know, the dimension of what he walked in. The Bible tells us that um, Abijah, Abijah, yeah, rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. And his son, yes, his son succeeded, succeeded him as what? As king. And in his days, the country was at peace for 10 years. So now look at the beginning of his life. The beginning of the life of Asa started with peace. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing that Christ came to give each and every one of us before he left, leaving it with the apostles? He says, I give you peace, not as the world gives. So look at the father giving Asa peace in the beginning of his what? Of his rule. 
Now look at it. The Bible says in verse 2 that Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. He removed the foreign altars and the high places, smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord and the God of what? Their ancestors and to obey his laws and commands. He removed the high places and incense altars in every town in Judah and the kingdom was at peace under him. He built up the fortified cities of Judah since the land was at peace. No one was at war with him during those years for the Lord gave him rest. So you can see the beginning of his life, right? He basically cut down everything. He took out all the idols. He basically left it all, you know, he was raising all it, all of it back for the Lord. And how amazing because this kind of things pleases the heart of God. So you can see that while he was doing this in, you know, in 10 years after he had built up all of these things, the Bible tells us can you see that they made a covenant that, hey, we have to serve God. We have to serve God. God has to be the only one that has to rule and reign in this place. How amazing that truly is. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at verse 9. The Bible says, while the whole land was at peace, right? <laughs> Some men, it says Zerah, the Cushite, they decided to march against what? Against Asa. Isn't it amazing how some people, you know, God is with you, but yet they still want to try God regardless of your work with them. This is why I always encourage a lot of each and every one of us that what, for whatever it is that we're going through, let us keep our mind fixed on the things of God. Because if God be for you, no one can what, can be against you. So you can continue to see they gathered the Zira, the Cushites, they marched out against who? Against Asa. So Asa went down to meet them and they took a battle position in the valley of Zephath, near what? Narisha. So you can see the amount of people that this one man brought against who? Against Judah. He said three, can you see that? He says a thousand, thousand. <laughs> can you see that dimension? A thousand, thousand basically came out to meet a man, <laughs> yes, who had an army of 300,000 men. Can you see that? 300,000 men from Judah equipped with shield, 280,000 from Benjamin, and with small shield, and with bows. So you can see the amount that he had. <laughs> 3 plus 2, that's 500,000. Can you see that? 580,000 people against 1,000 times 1,000. Do you see that? It says thousands upon thousands and 300 chariots. So now we begin to see this man meant business to come against who? Asa. But the Bible went on to tell us in verse 11 that Asa called on the name of the Lord. He says, hey, Lord, you can see that the first thing Asa did when this man rose up was for him to call unto the Lord. And he said, the Lord, Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, Lord our God, for we rely on you and in your name we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are God and do not let mere mortals prevail against you. Can you see? This helps you to understand that when you're doing the right thing, releasing the right prayers, there becomes a manifestation. So you can see with Asa, right? Now look at the beauty of it. He basically put down all the Asher poles. Now he needed help. Look at how God came to his rescue so very quickly from verse 12. It says, The Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled. Asa and his armies, they pursued them as far as Gerar. And such a great number of what? Of Cushites fell and they could not recover. They were Cushites. They were crushed before the Lord and his forces. It says, The men of Judah carried off large amount of what? Of plunder. So look at the victory. Yes, the man with 580 against another man who had almost millions of what? Of chariots or even you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions basically coming against him. But look at how God gave him victory because he was, because he cried out unto the Lord. Amen. So this is where we begin to understand our posture in the Father. Yes, this is where we begin to understand our posture, why we need to consistently seek the Lord. Because, you know, the Bible declares that if you go down to Egypt, you know, Egypt is going to fail you and you you go who go to ask for help will fail. Because sometimes when we're going through things, we tend to run to people first before we run to the Lord. And Asa did the right thing. He ran to the Lord first and look at how God gave him victory.
This should always be our stance majority of the time. Because when we need help and we go to the Lord, he is able to direct us to the person that we ought to what? We ought to go to, to be able to receive what he has for us. Because sometimes, because we know the pastor, because we know the apostle, because we know the evangelist, because we know the prophet, because we know the teacher, we are quickly, you know, able to run to them. Even though, yeah, they might be praying, their prayers are accurate, the prophetic words are accurate, and because you believe that God is with them, that you should run to them first. No, don't put any person above God. No, not at all. Let God be your first point of contact. Then let him lead you to whoever he needs to what? He needs to lead you to. So you can begin to understand because from that dimension, Asa, Asa began to make, yeah, he began to make covenant before the Lord. Now, let's see Second Chronicles chapter 15. It says, all who, can you see? The Bible says, in verse 12, it says, Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors with all their heart and their soul. It says, All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting and with trumpets. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly and it was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest. Look at the beauty of it. That, you know, this pleased the father that he wanted to seek him. That you, to the point that the father said, I'm going to give you rest. And God gave them rest on every side. So you can see that he began his ministry with rest. Eventually, somebody rose up wanting to disturb that rest. And God triumphed and restored them back into rest. So you can see in verse 16 of 2 Chronicles chapter what? Chapter what? 15. It tells us how Asa was serious about the things of God. The Bible says King Asa also deposed his grandmother, yes, Maka, from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive image for worship of Asherah. Asa cut it down, broke it up and burnt it in the Kidron Valley. Can you see that dimension? See how much he was so eager to serve the Lord that, hey, he, he, you know, grandma, I, I can't have any of that here. Isn't it amazing? Some of us, our parents are doing things, you know, they're manifesting all manner of things, but yet we are allowing them to do it. Yes, whereas we ought to be speaking to them in love. We should speak to them in honor, helping them to understand that, hey, you know, that direction you're taking is absolutely wrong. We ought to speak to them as the Lord is encouraging us to do so. I'm not asking you to go and start dishonoring your parents and rebuking them and all of those things when the Lord has not commanded you to do so. <laughs> Please, no, not at all. Do it in the way the Lord is calling you to do it. I just want you to be obedient to the Lord. Amen? Now you can see that for what Asa did, the Bible says in verse 19 that there was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. So look at first 10 years of Asa with peace and then another 25 years, yes, of absolute peace. Think about it. You are basically walking with Christ Jesus and there is no warfare in your life at all. All is peace, peace. peace. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This is a journey that majority of us have been. Yes, because God has given majority of us rest on every side. For you, you know, maybe you go to work, there is no trouble at work, there is no trouble at home, there is no trouble in the sanctuary, and you're just minding your own business, you're just doing your own thing, and you're just doing, you know, and everything seems to be going okay. This is the rest of the Father. Do you see that dimension? Because Asa, this was the dimension he was walking in. Because as he was seeking the Lord, the Father was just giving him rest. The Lord was blessing him with rest. Yep, Asa, you please my heart. Here is rest. Here is rest. Here is rest. And there was nobody to trouble. Because at one time when somebody decided to trouble, God was the one who dealt with it. Isn't that amazing? How many of you have been in that position where you had to cry out to the Lord concerning some situations and the Father had to come in and deal with that situation on your behalf? This is how it should be when we focus on the Father wholeheartedly. I'm not saying some people wouldn't want to raise his head. The Bible declares that weapons will form, but it just would not prosper. And that was what happened with who? What happened with Asa? Now, we see the beauty and the journey of Asa and his fellowship with the Father. Let's look at what happened next in 2 Chronicles and chapter 16.
The Bible says in the 30 what? That the sixth year of Asa's reign, Bashar, the king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. It says, Asa then took silver and gold out of the treasuries of the Lord's temple and out of his own palace and sent it to ben king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Damascus. He says, let there be a treaty between you and me. He said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I'm sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Now look at it. I want us to look at this context of the scripture very carefully. When Asa was in trouble, who did he call? In the beginning, in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, he called on the Lord and the Lord delivered. Do you see that? Now, <clears throat> warfare came against him again. Do you see that dimension? <clears throat> warfare rose up against him yet again. But what did he do? Rather than run to God, he began to run to people. How many times have we all done this in itself? When the father gave you victory at your place of work, the father gave you victory at your yeah in your sanctuary, the father gave you victory in your community, in that nation where you were, the father gave you victory. Now everything is looking good, everything sounds nice, you're comfortable. You have the car, you have the house, you have the wife, you have the children, you you you've received some most of what God has been given to you or what I, what He has promised you. Now you're comfortable. Now trouble seem to what want to elude the situation but rather than run to the one who gave you peace to allow you to walk into that dimension you began to run to the people you have trouble at work yes before you would have called on god before you went and met the pastor but now ah pastor can you can you pray for me I, i'm just going through this you know at my place of work maybe you have a business deal and you know and the father and maybe you're there and you're like now now i've made so much contracts i don't need to ask god anymore you know i can figure it out myself so now people are coming to you but rather than asking god for decision you're like no i, I discern this person he's okay let's take business from him now you can see that dimension in itself and the father is like wow so now you're leaving me out of the equation you're doing your own thing because you're comfortable you're doing your own thing because you believe in yourself that this is what you need to do and you're going to be okay with it how many times have majority of us made that statement when people say hey i need this help oh I know who to call. Yeah, I know who to call. My, you know, my, my phone is filled with those kind of contacts. Yeah, I can just call that senator. I can just call that vice chancellor. I can just call that president. I can just call that person. So now you can just call those people. No longer I can call on God. This was what Asa did. Do you see that dimension? And the Bible says Ben Haddad, he basically agreed to that in itself. Do you know? As he was making these deals, because for some of us, I believe this is why I've been sharing, that we have to be careful to do, of those whom we receive help, whom we receive counsel, whom we receive all of these things from. Because you know why? These kind of things, they can put you into what? Into trouble. Yes, they can. Because some of you, you don't know exactly who you're confiding in. Before, you used to confide with the Lord. You used to sit with the Lord. You used to talk to him. You used to like, Father, you know, this is what I'm going through. But that is no longer the case anymore. Because why? Now you have that friend. Now you have that pastor. Now you have that wife. Now you have the children. So God is no longer part of the equation anymore. The person that is with you is the one who has the equation. Now you go to them first. You go to your wife first. You go to your mother first. You go to your father first. You go to all of those people first before you are now making those decisions that you're making this was what asa did and now look at what the bible declares in verse 7 of second chronicles chapter 16 it says at that time hanani the what the seer came to asa king of judah and said to him because you relied on king of aram and not on the lord your god the army of the king of aram has escaped from your hand were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you were, when you relied on the Lord, He delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. Do you see that? God had to tell him, from now on, because you did not seek Me first, you are going to be what? You are going to be at war. How many of you 
yes, are at war today. So some of you, the warfare you are experiencing is not because, hey, you know, uh, the enemy is against you. No, it's because you refuse to seek God first concerning your situation. Yes, you refuse to seek God first. You, receive, you refuse to seek God first concerning whom to get married to. You refuse to seek God first concerning which job you ought to take. You refuse to seek God first concerning, yes, what you need to do concerning business, concerning ministry. You refuse to seek God first. And for that reason, the father being grieved, he says you have done a foolish thing. And from now on, you will be at war. So how many of us are in warfare today? How many of us are not able to rest? Warfare after warfare. You're there all night singing praises, worship, when you ought to be resting. Can you see that? So the reason why that warfare has come is the why. It's because of you not inquiring of the Lord first. So you can see how it started. He said they built a what? A siege. They built a ramp around can we read it together? It says that, look at what it says. It said they fortified Rama to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory. So this is why some of you, you don't have anyone to help you. Because you know why? The father was grieved because you went and sought somebody first. Can you see? They built a ramp around it. So when they built a ramp, rather than call. So when you had that problem at work, rather than call. When you had that immigration challenges, rather than to call. When you had that marriage situation, rather than to call. So the father was the first point of protocol because according to the Bible in Matthew 6 33, seek first the kingdom of God. But no, we sought the pastor first. And some of us, we went to a witch doctor. Some of us basically inquired of a witch doctor or a sorcerer or a witch basically. You know, like Saul. Saul went to the, to the witch at the end door rather than seeking God concerning this situation because God did not listen to him because he was not repentant of his sin. Can you see that dimension? And for that reason, majority of you, this is why nothing is coming out nothing is going in that is why you have remained stagnant do you see that dimension yep they built a territory can you see that dimension they fortified it they said hey no one is coming out can you remember this same story happening what in joshua chapter 6 it says no one was able to come out and no one was able to go in go in they shut it down why because of the israelites so, can you see the same dimension of King Asa? A man rose up against him. And rather than go to God, he went and began to sort, use what? Money. So, now you're rich. Now you have money. And you think money is basically going to sort your problem out. Yeah. So, before you used to call out to God. But now, the Father has blessed you financially. You're financially good. You're financially okay. So, everything now can be sorted out with money. Everything can be sorted out with finances. Everything can be sorted out with that what? with that the credit card all of those things it can be sorted out through it no longer god god has been moved away from the equation amen <laughs> this is why i want you to understand it and the way i was able to understand this scripture was because the father gave me a dream at one point and the dream that he gave was concerning like you know i remember there was a house uh, uh, that, that that i used to live in and in that house, I saw, uh, what's it called? A wall that was built around that house. And that the wall was so tall. At first, I actually thought, hey, you know, maybe the house, the father was trying to protect the wall, you know, the very house and things like that. And, you know, the house was protected. Nothing would come in. The father was saving, you know, put, placing a hedge of protection. I actually thought it was a hedge of protection. But then the father now began to help me to understand. It was not the hedge of protection. No, not at all. But a wall was built around you. Yes, around where, you know, around, around where you used to live. And they built a wall so that nothing goes in and nothing comes out. And that's because, because in the family, the root of it was we were not seeking the father. You know, no, not at all. We're not seeking him the way we ought to. But we're looking to other people for solution rather than to God. And in that moment, I believe somebody came to the house where we were and then decided to bury somebody, something right inside of that, inside of that house. Yep, they buried it. And immediately they buried it. Everything in the house stopped working. <laughs> Do you see that? You see that amazing? The very witchcraft of it. They buried something there and everything around that place stopped working completely. Yep, it just shut down. It was people were not able to help. Nobody was able to come in. But the father now revealed the truth. And he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free.
And the reason why they were able to do that was because we were not seeking help from God, but seeking help from other sources. Amen? So this is the dimension of majority of you. That is why I was sharing in a video, you know, the recent video that I believe I was sharing concerning Donald. And I was helping us to understand, hey, that you have to be careful because a lot of people, they come to the pulpit and they share their testimony. But that testimony, even though the word of the Lord came from the man of God, but they went to seek solution from elsewhere. So now that solution which they went to seek, they manipulated it, they manifested the testimony. Now they're coming to the sanctuary and then sharing the testimony. And by that testimony, which is a lie the pastor can be put yeah you know this can be ensnared ezekiel chapter 13 ezekiel chapter 12 that he can be ensnared because they lied about the testimony do you see the beauty of the holiness of the father so you can see why he says we need to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you we need to continue to seek the truth from the father that is how it should be Yes, it should be in that manner. I remember, you know, there was a time I was asking the Lord. I believe I've shared my testimony here before. When I was basically, you know, at, at the at university, you know, many years back. And somebody that I was I, I was basically in a relationship with then basically was dating an older man. And then eventually got pregnant and said I was the father of the child. So you can begin to understand the father eventually revealed the truth concerning it, even to the point that the father was helping me to understand that that person, yes, rather than basically, you know, when they lied that I was the owner and I wasn't the owner, the person, the older person they were dating was the owner, they eventually aborted the baby. Do you see that? And now the accusation of it is manifesting in my own life. But I'm so grateful because the father eventually showed that truth in context. Understanding that that is what they did, they eventually got riddance of the child. And that's why the father sometimes say some of these things, you've got blood on your own hands, that we have to confess. And when you confess your faults to one another, you'll be healed. So not condemning anybody. No, not at all. Because I know for some people, this is a this is an issue that you have to what talk to the father concerning. Because some of these things you can see it can allow, like we said in Second Chronicles chapter 16, that hey, you know, you're seeking God for solution, you're seeking God for the way out, and He gave you a way out in times past. You followed it. Now He's telling you this is the way out that I want you to walk through. But some of us are seeking other sources, like we're trying to find the easy way out do you see that and that's why the father is helping us to understand he says he was grieved with it and he says hey you will be at war consistently you will be at war because you did not seek me you went to seek other sources that is why we have to be careful and we have to seek the lord concerning some of these things everything that your your life should be God first, Christ first, Holy Ghost first, and eventually the deliverance will come. So this is why majority of the people have been in a place of stagnancy. Do you see that? So it's a place where you've been stagnant because a wall has been built up. No one is coming in and no one is going out. No help. So you've been praying for help. You've been praying for help. But the Father is helping you to understand that the root of the reason why the help has not come, not that I don't want to release the help to you, but because once at one point you trusted me, but now you trusted in yourself by trusting the people around you to give you counsels that was not of me. And you followed it all the way through. I was there for you right from the very beginning. Since your childhood, since you were being formed in your mother's womb, I was there with you. I helped you to pass your exams. I helped you to overcome that challenges. Your debt, I helped you to pay it off. Your children having problems, I helped you to sort it out. You were looking for a job, you called on to me, I gave you one. When you couldn't start your business, I gave you the plans. I laid it out for you. You followed it through, now you're manifesting it. When you wanted to begin that ministry, you were seeking my face. I gave you all the plans for the ministry. I bestowed it onto you. I blessed you with it. Now you're comfortable. Now you have the money now you have the family now you have the children you've been praying for that children you've been waiting now that you have the children now god is not there anymore it's all about the child now you're looking for all the sources how to basically manifest solution to whatever it is that you're going through you've abandoned god you're seeking men and for that reason the father says because you went and sought men can you see why the warfare broke out against you because you did not trust in the lord and lean on your own you leaned you leaned yeah you leaned on your own understanding you did not trust the lord you leaned on the money. 
<laughs> you lean on the advice of your parents. You lean on the very advice of your wife, your husband. You lean on the advice of your pastor, your leader, all of those things. You did not seek God first. So you can see, rather than Asa, just in the same way, when Samuel rebuked Saul, rather than Saul to go to the father, but he, what did he do? <laughs> he was, you know, David was there. He was trying to kill David. Now you can see the same message came to who? Came to Asa. And Asa was angry with the seer because of this. He was so enraged that he put him into prison. And at the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. So you can see why a lot of prophets, apostles, pastors, why they go through so much suffering. Because sometimes you deliver a word to people, they don't like it. Rather than take the word to the Lord, Asa did not take the word to the Lord. Asa did not confide in the Lord. Saul did not confide in the Lord. Asa did not confide in the Lord. Now you can see he began to persecute the people. Isn't that amazing? You can see because... Sometimes a prophet, a pastor, an apostle delivers a word. You begin to pursue that apostle. You begin to pursue that person. But rather than go and ask the Lord with a genuine heart. You can see that dimension. To God be the glory. And look at how eventually Asa went to sleep. That's to the point that he was troubled. But he didn't even ask the Lord. He died with it. So you can begin to understand it. So the Father is helping majority of you to understand that the reason for your stagnancy is because you went and sought outside counsel rather than seeking me that's the reason why the warfare broke out against you but i want to show you mercy really yes i want to i want to show you mercy by the authority of the living word of god so if you have done this we're going to share prayer together yeah can we can we do that we're going to share prayer together I just want to release this over you to God be the glory so that we can uh, come in agreement with this in itself, you know, just to basically cancel the assignment of that warfare that has broken out against you because it's time for you to enter into the rest of the father because a lot of you, you need to basically enter into that rest. Now, I'm not speaking to everybody. I'm speaking to those who have been stagnant. Yes. And they have walked in this dimension in itself. So that's why I said, majority of you, you have to take it to the Lord and let him minister to you. And by that in itself, it will show you mercy and then eventually reconcile onto that in itself. So I'm speaking to those who have been stagnant. And like I said, I had a dream. The wall was there. The wall was fortified. Can you see that? So the wall was fortified either by the person that you went to meet for help. They fortified the wall around you. And for that reason, they wanted to keep you stagnant. But today, it is broken in Jesus' mighty name. Can we share prayer quickly? Yeah. So just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person that I have received counsel from, instructions, or any help that was outside of your will, I repent of that. I repent for not seeking you first concerning my situation. I renounce every agreement with every counsel, instruction, and every advice I have been given by this people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So can I pray for you right in this moment? So Father, by the authority of the living word, I just want to bless them with the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I bless you with rest today and I bless you with the mercy of God. So I want to decree and declare over your life because the Bible says they built a, a, a wall, a, a fortified, they, they fortified around that city. I want to speak in the dimension of Joshua chapter 6. The Bible says the gates were shut, that no one was able to go out and go in. So right this minute by the authority in the name that is above every other name. The Bible says, who are you mountain Zerubbabel? You will be made plain. So every wall that has been placed around you to keep you stagnant, I command that those walls have crumbled to the ground. I declare that to Today, I break off every stagnancy over your life. I break off the assignment of warfare over your life. I release the mercy of God that where this warfare has broken out from, let the mercy of God reconcile you, reconcile your family, reconcile every dimension of you back into the rest of the Father. Now that the wall is crumbled completely, I declare every opportunity that you have missed, every dimension of loss 
process that you have manifested because the Bible says, according to Joel chapter 2, verse 25, it says, The years, the locusts, the cankworms, and the palm worms have eaten, I will restore. So, everything that you lost in the period of that stagnancy, I release angels. The Bible says, You have come into their company, the innumerable company of them. I release angels to go forth right this minute and begin to reconcile whatever you have lost, whatever was stolen from you, to reconcile it unto you. Because the Bible says, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come here today to give you life and give it abundantly. Therefore, I speak right this minute and I prophesy over your life. New wine, new grain, new opportunities, new doors that you're entering into them in the fullness that the name that is above every other name is manifested in your life. It's a new beginning over you. That's why Ezekiel 37 says prophesy. And I prophesy over you that everything that once was once dried up, that was not the will of the Lord for it to be so. I command the wind to bring breath and bring them alive once again that every opportunity is alive once again every loss has been reconciled with fruitfulness the bible says in john chapter 15 it says i prune back that you might bear much fruit and i declare and i prophesy that you are bearing much fruit that every accusation concerning the places that you've been to or you've been and times past to receive help that was not of the will of god i silence that accusation the bible says in romans 8 and 1 it says for the it says for the now the case is closed in the passion translation there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against you why because the accuser of the brethren has been hurled down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony we testify that jesus is lord and he whom the son sets free is free indeed therefore do not be yoked again into slavery because it is for freedom that christ today has set you free so i speak according to the very word of joshua when the wall finally came down that wall of stagnancy that no one comes through you or come out of you. That word I speak today because the Bible says at that time Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Cursed be for the Lord is anyone who undertakes to rebuild this city Jericho. So anyone who has decided to rebuild that wall and keep you stagnant, cursed be it. The Bible says at the cost of his firstborn, he will lay the foundations of that wall. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gate. So I declare that right this minute. This word is established and sealed completely that that wall that has come down never to be put up again and i want to speak and i prophesy isaiah chapter 62 over your life the bible says according to isaiah 62 in verse 1 it says for zion's sake for your sake i prophesy that i will not the bible says the father will not keep silent for your sake jerusalem i will not remain quiet till your vindication i declare that you have been vindicated you have been vindicated you have been vindicated till her vindication shines out like the dawn has salvation like a blazing torch today the nations have seen your vindication and the kings your glory you are being called by a new name you are no longer stagnant your finances no longer stagnant your family no longer stagnant your ministry no longer stagnant none of the dimension of your life no longer stagnant because you have been called by a new name that the mouth of the lord will be storm you say you will be the crown of splendor in the lord's hand a royal diadem in the hand of our god and he says, no longer will you be called deserted. No longer will they call you deserted. No longer will they call you stagnant. No longer will they call you deserted. No longer will they say no one can go in or come out against your life, against every dimension of you anymore. No, your name will no longer be called desolate because it says you'll be called Hebzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take the light in you. And I prophesy over your land that your land is married to the Lord. He says, as a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Today, the Father rejoices over you because freedom has found you. You are liberated from stagnancy and you're walking into fullness. For it pleases the Father that the fullness of him, the fullness of him is manifesting in you. That is why you can read according to Isaiah and chapter 60 and verse 11. It says, your gates shall continuously be open. That is what the Father declares. He says in his word, according to his name, your gates will stand open. They will never again be shut because it was shut before. I declare it has been opened. It says day or night. It will never be shut day or night. So
so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. They are kings led in triumphal procession. No longer will you be without help. Help will always locate you. Help will always find you. Help will always be around you. Help will always come to you because it's where does my help come from? It comes from him, the maker of the heavens and the earth. So today, the wall has fallen. The gates have been opened. Now you are receiving the fullness of what the Father ordains for you. No longer shall I declare over your life that wall be rebuilt. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I bless the Lord for you. You are the blessedness of the Father. I honor the Father for you. You are beautiful. You are holy. You are righteous. Today is a new day for you, a new beginning in the presence of the Most High God. This is the beginning of beginnings. It's the first month as we declared it right from the very beginning. So receive what the Father has ordained for you because your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I love you all. Stay blessed. The stagnancy is broken. You have begun to walk in the fruitfulness of the Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. That's why Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Now that the wall is down, the gate is open. All men have been drawn to you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you.